like uh, the, the crop wizard, one of the things you have to be cautious of is what is the source material behind that? Um, and how is it making that decisions? Um, companies are coming up with their own AI systems as well. Um, and so knowing the source of the information and, and what it's bringing to you um, is something that I think needs to, needs to be aware of. What's the source? Um, who's providing it? So is there any big projects that you're working on in this digital space um, that you can share with our farmers? Sure. Um, one of the ones that I'll, I'll I, there's a whole lot of things that are coming out of the AI Institute, uh, AI Farms Institute here at the U of I. And uh, one of those that's um, being tested right now, um, a lot of farmers may have heard about ChatGPT, an AI tool that um, you can talk to and help get answers from. Um, but we've, uh, our team has come up with something called Crop Wizard, which uses a chat GPT type interface where um, you can ask it questions, uh, agricultural questions. You can put in pictures of uh, weeds or bugs or things, and it'll, in addition to trying to identify, it'll look up resources about how to control, um, do a whole, and come up with recommendations. And it is trained uh, specifically for agriculture using land grant uh, resources from across the country. So it's, it is built with farmers and ag consultants in mind to help answer questions. It's kind of like uh, an AI extension service almost. A lot, of the, a lot of the stuff that's going into it has come from different extension organizations and, uh, around the uh, United States. So it's a kind of a cool tool I and mean, it's being tested right now. Um, I've used it on a lot of times when I get questions, I'll, uh, if I don't know, or even if I do know, I'll run it through the, the crop wizard um, to uh, come up with some recommend. It's hear what it can find on the thing. And one of the key things about it, and a lot of times with something like chat GPT, you don't know where those answers came from and what's behind them. But with the, the crop wizard, it actually gives you instant links to the, the original article. So you can go back to the original source and look at that source and find out that it came from Washington State or some, uh, you know, know where it, it, or is it an Illinois reference? Um, so you get an idea of, of where it's coming from um, so that it fits you. I had a question the other day about um, uh, solar panels and trying to grow uh, forages, forage grasses underneath solar panels and what species would be best. Um, and um, being a corn and soybean and wheat guy, and, and having been around, I had some ideas of some of the grasses that might work better, but I ran it through um, the crop wizard and it came up with a list um, of, of grass species um, and, and their shade tolerance um, that looked really good. And so I shared that with the, the client as well as my interpretation of the, of the results. So uh, that's a tool. Um, one of the big things, and some of the folks or have probably may have seen it at some field days are our small robots that we're using to plant cover crop seeds. Um, that's a big project that's uh, expanding rapidly with the iCover grant. Um, and we'll see more of that being able to get out these robots that can automatically run up and down corn rows, uh, throwing out cover crop seeds in late August and early September. So the cover crop gets a jump on uh, its growth um, before um, the, the crops are even harvested. Um, so it gives us an uh, option of some different species of cover crops as well, instead of just cereal rye, which is what most of the cover crop goes on as. Um, but this going out early gets us uh, an earlier seeding date um, with some more options. Um, we're also we're looking at uh, some precision livestock management. Um, there is a supercharged facial recognition system for livestock that some of the animal scientists have been working on that can track um, swine or cattle or even goats um, that um, can monitor them, identify them, keep track of them as they grow, uh, know which animal is which and how active it is, um, what it's, uh, um, what it's, probable weight would be by building a 3D model and knowing the density of the animal. So it can kind of give you an idea of how much it weighs throughout its growth cycle. Um, so there's some really, uh, you know, 
stuff that's going on in that area as well. We've got the Farm of the Future site here at the university uh, where we're showcasing some of these things. Yeah, we might have some farmers that hit you up about that. I could see them being all excited. So um, yeah, that is a lot of great information from that to cover crop robots. I've seen some of those videos. And then also, you know, what you're doing in the livestock management space is incredible. And, um, you know, before we end here, is there anything else that you just think is really important to your job in AI and the future of AI and farming? Um, I think it's something that, uh, uh, that farmers need to be aware of. It's, it's going to be integrated into equipment. It's going to be integrated into other systems and programs that are being uh, sent to farmers. I think like uh, the, the crop wizard, one of the things you have to be cautious of is what is the source material behind that um, and how is it making that decisions. Um, companies are coming up with their own AI systems as well. Um, and so knowing the source of the information and, and what it's bringing to you um, is something that I think needs to, needs to be aware of. What's the source? Um, who's providing it? Um, AI can be kind of bent sometimes if, if the people that are programming it want it to be that way um, so that it leans a certain way. But uh, that's a lot of it's going to be more uh, integrated into equipment and automated decision making on the go kinds of things. You know, as I was preparing for a program that I did on AI and agriculture, I went into chat GPT and did one of the, the stupid, silly, fun things that, that AI can do and asked it to create a limerick about AI and agriculture. So in fields where the crops sway and dance, AI brings a technological advance with sensors and drones, precision at homes, in agriculture, it leads the expanse.